Hello beautiful minds and welcome back to our first show. Okay, so let's see, we have 30 sections and let's start with the first section. So, so the first section is about the subjects, uh, the daily issues we're dealing with during the quarantine, but not only because our uh, today's subject is a general subject, which is so how to stop taking things personally. How to stop taking things personally. It's a hard thing to do that we should learn to do. So, what, do you, what, you, what are your thoughts about it? To be honest, it depends on the situation. Uh, if we are talking about uh, if other people, for example, criticize you uh, in a way you can say, okay, let's, uh, it's not about me, it's a little bit about them, their background, their idea, their state of mind, uh, their, how they are used to live life. So it's not specially, it's not specifically for you. Yeah. Uh, this is the case that I'm thinking about. Uh, yeah, let me give you another one. When you, uh, let's take a business example. When you're working with a colleague or most importantly a manager, mm -hmm. like, uh, and they just come and criticize um, the way, the work that you've done as a, as a team. How can you like not take it personally and try to actually work on it and, and evolve and improve the work that you've been doing? Okay. To be honest, I'm way used to work with clients, so I have different perspective on this. Uh, my perspective is generally I'm thinking about the client and the result. When you put on your mind the result, if your manager or your client criticizes you in a way or another, and the, the first thing you see is, will it affect my result? Which means the end result of it, because whatever action or task we do is only to reach that result. So, for example, let's take an example. You did send an email and he did criticize you in a way that you did send an email. You say if you you think if it will impact or not your result, and if it will, you need to change because this is the perspective of it. If it's not, if it's just a free way to criticize people, yeah. then you just yeah. Yeah, you understand. You say okay. You you say okay, but yeah. So yeah, there is a lot of things. People say there is different type of management, but I think always management comes from the context of the manager. Uh, his way of thinking, his way of handling things, his way of uh, delegating. So it's always coming back from them more than you personally. But that's why, that's why when you, you, you get any criticize whatsoever, think about the result. If you care about the result, you would try to change it because we learn, we grow, and this is how we do. And if it will not impact, you, you, you say, okay, I understand, and move on. How, how about a business partner? Sometimes with a business partner, you just uh, fight. And you fight about business, actually. So how can you like separate that, uh, f like the way, He's, he, he didn't like something or he doesn't agree on something, how could you keep it professional and not take it personally? Like you come and tell me, uh, Safa, you should have done this, this, like that. Uh, how can I not take it personally uh, and focus on the, on the, how can I say that, on the professional side? So I've been working on that. Uh, because it's not easy to work uh, with partners that are especially friends or family. So uh, I take, uh, at first, I take it personally actually. Yeah. Whenever we fight about something business related, I take it personally and I just react right away or maybe not react and be mad about it because I took it 
personally and try to zoom out and remember that we are in a, in a professional context so try to remember that um, I shouldn't take this personally because I would do the same and I do the same with him and expect him not to take it personally but yeah it's an instinct that should be worked on I guess what do you think? yeah it's an instinct and in a way creating accountability on yourself saying that um, that's why I'm and also I did say coming back to the results you say if you receive any criticize or you give any criticize you always take you, you are accountable for yourself so you see if this how people what they did said will or not impact the results and if it will check yourself will, will it help you improve something yeah. uh, if it's like something it will help you build or correct or work on something you've done wrong then yeah you should take that uh, into consideration but if it's like it will not help you at all and it will just be there as a negative vibe then just don't take it yeah as and, easy and, as that. and the question for me on for you on that is you said that you are working on it how you are doing that how are you trying to work on that? Like I said, just take a time. Take a time. To, yeah. Uh, take time to think about it. And uh, the next time it gets a little bit easier and just react faster than the first time. You remember that it's business related. You remember the context. You remember where you are and the subject you are uh, talking about. And then get it gets easy easier uh, every time. And uh, you learn. To just uh, uh, separate the professional from the personal feelings. And do you think that uh, the way that people take it personally is a way to be in the defense of it? Because I think it's not. If you act on it, if you act and you have yeah. always a perspective, you don't be in the defensible. Perhaps yes, yes. yes. Be, uh, perhaps uh, let me just add this and tell me your perspective, and I, I just thought of, of it now is perhaps you are criticizing yourself in, in the general way of the work and because you criticize yourself 24 7 perhaps in a way inside of you so you did become defensible a uh, defensive you want to defend yourself against yourself so any whenever anybody criticizes you, you just go yeah the, the, the instinct of defensive it can, it can be out. for different reasons the first one can be this the second one can be because you just think you are perfect or you think you don't need to change anything you know yeah. that you are always right so whenever anybody criticizes you, you just what the hell is wrong with that person you know but if you go and the um, if, if you are in your mindset you have if you go in the mindset of, of self uh, evolving and self improvement and self when you work on yourself you just take any critique uh, into consideration and uh, that will help you actually work on yourself and get better and, and work on the best version of yourself right okay perfect, perfect. Yeah. Moving on to the next section of the show, uh, where we answer your questions related to our field of expertise, which is consulting, CRM, and Salesforce. Uh, we uh, to put you back into uh, the context, uh, CRM's uh, customer relationship management tools uh, in general helps you uh, manage your company interaction with your current customer and the potential one. Yeah, it's it's a way to to see every touch point you have with your client and, and try to improve every touch point so every experience would be perfect. And yeah, so today's question is asked by uh, Joseph who said that how can I integrate Hubs HubSpot with Salesforce? The answer, I'll go right away with the answer really quick. Uh, you can use uh, Salesforce integration app within uh, HubSpot and then try to map the fields you want to take from Salesforce to HubSpot. For sure. Yeah. yeah, and then 
maybe you should think through uh, before just mapping all the fields. Uh, think uh, business related to your business use, uh, your business needs, and select the fields you need to map actually. For sure. Uh, let's remind our uh, people who don't know HubSpot, what is it? HubSpot is a marketing automation tool. It's uh, it's B two B marketing automation tool uh, as part for Salesforce or Market or or uh, whatever it is. That can um, work with Salesforce. Yeah. Oh. Uh, for uh, what I can bring in here, because she said it from the technical perspective, what I can bring value here is from a business perspective. The thing that uh, you need to do is you need to think about the alignment between the sales and marketing because in a way what HubSpot or whatever is the marketing automation tool will do is try to marketing at scale. What Salesforce can do is you can, the, it's the end of the sales pipeline, let's say, not the end of the sales pipeline, the end of the lead uh, pipeline and you try to uh, involve more the salesperson. So what you are need to think about is the sales and marketing al alignment. The information between these two systems need to go in both ways. Uh, because marketing need to know in which stage this leads did go, or perhaps was in the future. Mm -hmm. And the same go the sales, he need to know in which type of level of engagement or which level of scoring he have so he can know uh, how he have in the future or this one particular how it goes with so the one thing that i want to focus on on this is although it's bringing two system you bringing two departments at the same time which are the sales and marketing mm -hmm. and that need to work together mm -hmm. you need to as my sister said and my partner said is you need to think about uh, the relevant information, information that should be exchanged between, between two two systems and if, if you have if you want to go uh, deep on this don't hesitate to tell us because we, we have too much on this and we did work on it too much so uh, so don't uh, hesitate to comment below your uh, questions yeah. or send them uh, through Instagram or LinkedIn or or our email for sure, for sure. so moving on to the next section which is the code of the day and today's code uh, is the crisis of today is the joke of tomorrow H G Wells. Um, funny but true. <laughs> but yeah, but true. Uh, what I can say from my perspective is. Uh, I know that whenever we go, sorry, I know, I know that whenever we go through something really hard, we always say to each other, we'll laugh about this one day. Right? Yeah, sure. So it, it is hard, it is sometimes too hard, but we know that one day we will look back and we will be already over that and uh, not always laugh about it, but uh, for sure um, it is over and we've learned something and we sort of enjoy those, we're happy that we got through those experiences, right? Yeah, for sure. Uh, what I can add for that is, for me, I, I would change the sentence, for me is the crisis of today is the story of tomorrow. Exactly. Uh, That's uh, why I said yeah. we don't always joke about it, uh, we don't always laugh uh, about it, but we will certainly be happy that we got through it and it is, it is a story to tell. It, it is a story to tell. And we did, we were born with a parent who they have a lot of story and yeah. we all I'm always thinking about uh, it's hard now but it's uh, a story to tell to my child uh, or children in general I don't know because I don't have any for now <laughs> but uh, but it's it's a story to tell for sure and let I will give you an example coming from my life is um, a certain point I did go to. Um, course and it was a little bit difficult uh, which is an island which is an island uh, French, island French island for sure and it was a little bit difficult but uh, when everything were close I said uh, I, I stay and I think in moment that 
I am in the living room, I'm eating dinner and I'm saying to my child, um, do you know that your father did went to course without knowing any person, uh, staying in a small village which there is only a student and a college student and uh, locals, locals like, yeah, and, no foreigners. and the weekend there is nobody there. Uh, I mean the, the island is beautiful and tourists yeah. go there and uh, there is the coast around the, the, the sea is really beautiful but where he, you yeah, were but, living was yeah. a really small village where there was like one university and few locals and no not many foreigners so yeah it was sure so what, what I'm thinking about and is saying that that scene make me laugh and happy and say okay i will get over this crisis but i have and tell a story and right? tell a story and the same goes with the situation that we have today all the challenges we have i'm saying okay it's a challenge but it's a, a big story to tell to my child or children and and the harder it gets yeah. Uh, a greater story it would yeah, be. Sure, yeah, sure. absolutely. Right. Do, do, do you have a story like this to share? Absolutely. I've always, I've already talked about. I I think a number of stories in our last mm. episodes. So all of those stories are, um, all of those experiences are were really hard back then, and they make great stories to tell. Um, yeah. Um, I don't know if I can... I think that this situation right here, our experience with the newly business we just mm -hmm. launched in the most perfect timing <laughs> coming with the coronavirus and the... I know, I know people had it worse and I'm not complaining but just uh, for small businesses uh, that just launched it's not the perfect timing because everything is on hold, every project is just frozen so it's a little bit hard to adapt but it will be a great story one day to it tell our yeah, it's uh, one of the people to say. and our kids and our friends and everyone actually so yeah. we're not gonna stop our, uh, my kids but yeah so, for yeah. sure for sure so yeah it's in a way uh, uh, you see the light in, in difficult time of fun. Tunnel? Tunnel, yeah. yeah. Tunnel, tunnel. At, at the, you see the light in the end of the tunnel. Oh, yeah, 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 for sure. Exactly. So, uh, if you have any comment or you have any question, don't hesitate to ask. Or us. if you want to share your experience and how you can share your story or a past experience, a hard experience, uh, don't hesitate to comment below. Your value and your answer is very valuable to, to us. To us, so. yeah. So thank you guys for interacting with us. And see you next time. Have a nice day. Bye.